We do not promote the use of legal or illegal psychoactive substances. This video has been created strictly for harm reduction purposes. People are always asking me which psychedelic I believe is the best one to take for a beginner, for someone who's never tried a psychedelic before. They also want to know what dosage they should take, what to expect out of their experience, as if I've not made enough videos that kind of describe that. I mean, using the limitations of language, of course, not to sound arrogant or anything. I could never successfully explain the psychedelic experience. At the very most, I can just scratch the tip of it. The tip of it. it sounds like I'm talking about scratching a penis. What I meant to say was at the very most, I'm just scratching at the surface of what is the psychedelic experience. I cannot encapsulate it given language. The only way to really understand what psychedelics are is to take the blue pill or the red pill and see how far down you want to go down this rabbit hole. My impersonation is terrible. This video is being made in the name of harm reduction. The best form of harm reduction is obviously abstinence, but we saw how well abstinence works in terms of, you know, human beings. We've been using psychedelics for thousands of years, and it doesn't seem that we're going to stop anytime soon. So instead of beating a dead horse and trying to use tactics that don't work, I figured that I would, you know, offer safety advice, and explain to people how to do things safely who are already going to do them. But I'm pretty much preaching to the choir here, and you guys all know that already. I just feel like I have to preface this video by saying that for people who may have never seen one of my videos before. Of course, if I'm suggesting to you what I believe is the best for a beginner, it's going to be my own personal suggestion. It's my perspective, meaning there's a lot of people who aren't going to agree with my perspective. So I just want to let you guys know that this is coming from me. First of all, it's not really that important what the substance is. I mean, it is and it isn't, but what's most important is actually the dosage that you consume. For example, there's 50 micrograms of LSD, and then there's 100 micrograms of LSD. The experience from 50 to 100 is quite different. Doubling the dosage creates this massive leap from, you know, just experiencing maybe some increased colors to seeing full-on patterns, increased tactile enhancements, and potentially seeing your friend's faces warp. So what it really comes down to in regards to which substance I would suggest for a beginner is which one is going to be the safest for you on a physical level. Usually it comes down to a fight between do you try shrooms first or do you try LSD first? A lot of people recommend trying shrooms first just because it's easier to know that the shrooms are real versus with LSD, there are several chemicals, I've made a video about it, that can fit on one little tab of LSD, meaning your LSD may not actually be LSD. So if you do decide to start with LSD first, you 100% have to buy the Ehrlich Reagent Testing Kit, which I will conveniently include a link to in my video description. So back to which substance I recommend. Some people recommend 2CB because they say that 2CB isn't really like tripping, it's a very light experience. And I agree, 2CB until you go above 30 milligrams, at least from my experience, isn't really that intense of a trip. It doesn't really give you a good intro into the psychedelic headspace, so I really wouldn't suggest 2CB for a beginner if you really want to see what like a traditional psychedelic is like. Assuming that you are 100% certain that your LSD is not a research chemical, that it's not N-bomb, that it's not some of these new wacky shit that they're putting on blotters, assuming that you've tested your substance, I would suggest that a beginner tries LSD as their first psychedelic over shrooms. This is because psilocybin mushrooms have been described as being strapped to the back of the rocket ship and the rocket's taking you wherever it wants to go, versus LSD is more like you're at the controls. Whereas in reality, both of them are kind of like being strapped to the back, but when you're on the rocket ship of LSD, you can like throw your body weight around to kind of get it to move in the direction you want the trip to go in. Versus with shrooms, every time you try to like guide the rocket, it goes, fuck you, asshole, and then it goes a completely different direction. I, I would say that's a better explanation of the difference between the two. For that reason, LSD is generally easier to handle. LSD has more potential, I want to say, to allow clear thoughts. Shrooms are often described as confusing, and they're more nauseating by nature, and overall the mix of confusion and nausea on the come-up can sometimes spiral, especially a new user, 
it can spiral them into some negative headspace, which you don't really want that potential on your first trip. But if you cannot get your hands on clean LSD, which a lot of people can't, shrooms are going to be the best option for your first psychedelic trip. There's also people who email me asking this question. They say, so I've never tried acid or shrooms. I want to try DMT. Is it okay to try DMT without ever trying another psychedelic? But I've smoked weed before. And this is kind of a, uh, a two-part answer, which I'm going to get to near the end of the video. Now on to dosages. There is no rush to jump right into a deep, potentially mentally dangerous, post-traumatic stress-inducing psychedelic experience. Your first trip should be light. Like, like, there's no rush. Most people crawl before they run, or at least they walk before they run. Babies don't just pop out of the vagina and start, like, running marathons. Start light. You're going to take 50 micrograms. It's the same in my research chemical video. If you are st trying a new substance for the first time, you always start with a threshold level dose to see how your body reacts to it. It's also called allergy testing. You may be allergic to the substance, and if you take a full dose, that could be dangerous. Now with LSD and shrooms, there's no cases of people being allergic to them. Well, I've read some reports of some people thinking they might be allergic to them, but there's no cases in the literature of someone having an allergic reaction which resulted in death, so you can feel safe in that regard. The reason why I also suggest LSD over shrooms is because even though the tabs aren't always accurately dosed, you still have a better idea, well at times, this is so, this is so subjective and there's so many variables, but you still have a better idea of the potency. Different strains of mushroom can vary dramatically in potency. It can be as much as one milligram of psilocybin per gram of dried shrooms to 12 milligrams of psilocybin per gram of dried shrooms. That's insane. That means that it would take 12 grams of psilocybin mushrooms of the kind that have one milligram per gram to equal one gram of the kind that have 12 milligram per gram. That's a massive jump. Granted, most people aren't selling the 12 milligram per gram uh, psilocybin mushrooms. So in the name of safety, your first time, start off with a gram, gram and a half max. I don't see any reason why you have to go higher than that. Plan your first experience as your introductory class. You don't take an introductory class in university and like jump right into the deep topics. You cover the basics, you get a feel for what you're gonna get yourself into, and then you slowly work your way into, you know, fully immersing yourself in a new topic, in a new experience. A psychedelic experience can bring forth feelings that you didn't think were physically or humanly possible to feel. It's good to get your feet wet before just diving headfirst into this pool of unknown. So again, I, I know I'm beating this to death, your first trip you need to start low. It should also be noted that even once you have your first intense experiences, it takes a while to get comfortable in that type of environment. It took me at least three to five trips until I could even bring anything back from it, until I went, hey, these experiences, there's something here. There's, there's some lessons that I can learn here. This shit is deep, man. It, it took a few trips before I realized that psychedelics had the potential to change my life. My first few trips, I was just speechless. I was like in awe at the vibrating patterns in front of me and my girlfriend's face shifting into a more pretty version of herself. I didn't actually say that. And the next thing that you're going to do, if preparing for your first ever psychedelic trip, this is just common sense to me, but for a lot of people it seems to be, um, yeah, you know what they say about common sense, it ain't so common. Research your substance and what to expect out of the experience. So many people, fail here. They don't do adequate research. A little background info on me. Before I try a new substance, for example, the first time I tried an LSD analog such as Ethlad, I researched the living shit out of it. I believe I actually read every single article written about Ethlad. I read every user report, every web page. There wasn't a morsel of information that I didn't digest when trying to figure out if Ethlab was right for me, what I was gonna expect of the experience, I wanted the good, the bad, the mystical, the terrible. I wanted to get a broad, just, you know, a complete picture of what other people are saying about this substance. Granted, I also knew that no matter what they say, you can't adequately describe what a psychedelic is going to be like, but I mainly did this just because I was curious about the safety of it. If you're not willing to take the time to research the substance that you're putting into your body, which I think is ridiculous. These are profound, powerful, potentially dangerous molecules. You need to have as many bases covered as you can. Do your research. Don't just trust what I say. Don't just watch my video. 
Research, 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 learn, learn, learn. Next, if you are on any antidepressant medications such as SSRI medication, you should stay away from psychedelics in general. The combo of SSRIs and MDMA can be deadly. It can cause serotonin syndrome. This doesn't often happen, but it can happen. In the name of safety, if you are on SSRI medication, avoid psychedelics. A lot of time what happens is because the SSRIs are hitting the same serotonin transporters in your brain, you now have this natural crazy tolerance to anything that hits those receptors, meaning a point of MDMA will probably do absolutely nothing to you. You won't even feel it. A tab of acid will just be like, oh, I feel a bit of energy, but that's it. People recommend if you do intend to take psychedelics and you're on SSRIs to be off them for at least two weeks. But again, I'm gonna lean towards safety and I'm gonna say make sure you're off them for at least a month before trying anything. Finally, when planning for your first experience, you need to expect the unexpected. You, even when th with a small dose, sometimes you can be very sensitive to a substance, which is why you start with a small dose. Especially because you've never tried a psychedelic before, this is so unexpected, this is untested waters for you, you 100% need a trip sitter. I have created a video called How to Trip Sit. If you need to teach your trip sitter on, you know, the ins and outs, the do's and don'ts of trip sitting, link to the video here. This is now beginning to feel like a video where I just link to a hundred other videos, but I guess that's just what this is turning into. Also, in that video you will learn about set and setting. I don't want to cover set and setting here because it has been so beaten to death and I've said it so many times, but set meaning who you are as a person, where you are in your life, it even means what you ate that day, your neurochemistry that day, certain days you might be different. That is your set, your setting is where you are, your environment, um, yeah, are you in your house, are you outside, that's your setting. If you're going for your first experience and you want it to be the most positive, well, the most potential for positivity possible, your set and setting have to be optimal. Meaning, design your set and setting so that you are very calm, very relaxed, get some incense going, I love incense, get some candles, yeah, whatever chills you out. Plan a playlist, plan a music playlist. I don't want to get into too much detail here because you can learn more about that in my other videos like my how-to shrooms video or my how-to LSD video. And finally, a lot of people are very worried about the potential for bad trips when they've never tried a psychedelic before. They ask me, how do I prevent a bad trip? Well, you can't really 100% prevent a bad trip, but what you can do is through set and setting, lower the potential for having it, and through starting small. I have a video out called Bad Trips. Again, recommending another video, but so this doesn't go too long. If you wanna learn more about bad trips and how bad trips are actually really good trips in disguise, check out that video. And if you find yourself in a psychedelic experience during your first trip and you cannot calm yourself down and you're with a trip sitter, or maybe you're alone, I have just put out a video this is, I, I promise, this is my final recommendation to another video. I have just put out a video called Live Ego Death, Watch While Tripping. In this video, it's basically me talking to you while you're tripping. It's designed to calm you down while you're high. And you can listen to the soothing, calm, relaxing voice of Psych Substance as he does his very best to calm you down. Do you guys like my calm voice? <laughs> I just went from sounding like I'm cracked out on coffee to, um... Holding a relaxation meditation seminar. Our seminar. To sum up this video, I would recommend LSD over shrooms for a first experience, but only if it is tested by the Ehrlich reagent. Test your substance. If you can't get your hands on some tested LSD, start with shrooms. But realistically, either one works for a first experience in a low enough dose. You're gonna be fine either way. Have a trip sitter, plan the proper set and setting, Research your substances, and finally, plan for your next day. A lot of the time, the next day can be interesting. People either have what they call an afterglow, where they're feeling residual good feelings and effects from their trip, or they have a come down, where they can feel nasty, groggy, you can feel uh, like you just got run over by a bus sometimes. It can be a pretty serious come down. I've had come downs from LSD where I cried my eyes out because um, I didn't really know how to integrate or handle the information that I felt the molecule was trying to teach me at the time. So come downs are something you have to plan for. Make sure you have a free day the day after tripping just for that reason. And finally, let's go full circle and answer that DMT question. So for those of you who want to know if you can try, this is for smoked DMT, not ayahuasca. My nose is itchy, sorry. So is it okay to try DMT as your first psychedelic if you've never tripped on shrooms, never tripped on LSD, never tripped on anything? Maybe you've smoked weed, maybe you've never even smoked weed. Maybe you've never even drank alcohol and you're curious if you can try DMT first. The answer, shockingly, 
Yes, of course you could try DMT first. Get an accurate milligram scale that measures 0.000, and even then most of them aren't that accurate, and what you're gonna to wanna to do is weigh out about 10 milligrams. Of course, test your DMT first to make sure that what you have is real DMT. 10 milligrams smoked DMT is a very threshold experience. If you're lucky, you might get some patterns start to get wavy and moving around. DMT, usually for me, a lot of the time, I mean, all psychedelics are, have unexpected qualities, but a lot of the times the colors are just gorgeous. Things get very orange for me, and I feel like I'm, I'm like in this virtual reality. DMT is the substance that really makes you feel like this world is yeah, a VR headset. It's like this really is a simulation. DMT just makes everything look very virtual to me. It's very cool, very high definition and just crisp and clean and beautiful. So from 10 milligrams, you can get some enhanced visuals. I dare you to look at your face in the mirror. It can look pretty damn cool. Uh, things look more circular, I find. It, it, the visuals on DMT, I have to say, are some of, if not my favorite. There's absolutely nothing that compares to a full breakthrough dose of DMT. But if you've never tried a psychedelic before and you want to start with DMT, yeah, start with a threshold dose. I would say that DMT might actually be the optimal choice for a beginner psychedelic, just because a 10 milligram dose of smoked DMT lasts between two to five minutes. Well, some people say five to 10 mil minutes, but at, at that low a dose, like five minutes, yeah, probably about five minutes, and then by the 10 minute mark, you're, you're still feeling the afterglow. That's the beauty of a 10 milligram dose. Like, it can be five to 10 minutes of like actually seeing some enhanced visuals, but then after that, you get this like 30 or so minute just come down where you just feel really good. DMT can feel like a mood enhancer. It can make my body feel warm and like I'm just full of love, especially at that low dose. DMT in a low dose is perfectly fine. Now I know you guys wanna know what about in a high dose. I couldn't recommend a high dose DMT for your first trip, unless of course you get used to the threshold dose and if you wanna, you know, slowly push your doses more and more, then you can do that too. You just wanna keep in mind that you don't wanna jump headfirst into a very intense psychedelic experience because there have been people who have taken psychedelics and been traumatized, traumatized for life. It's called PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. It can happen. Some people have trips and they're just never the same again. And it's really sad when this happens because those experiences can be avoided. I've had trips, I mean, you guys have seen my trip stories where <laughs> I've given myself the potential to get P PTSD. I was an idiot. And I make these videos because I want you guys to learn from me and not be an idiot too. I want you to use me as an example because for me, I, I was my own bad example of what not to do. If I could do it all over again though, would I do things differently? I live with no regrets, so I can't say I would. But anyway, this video is dragging on far too long. I really hope that you guys found this helpful. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to leave me a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for weekly psychedelic related content. I want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon. You guys are absolutely amazing. I love each and every one of you. If you want to learn more about what Patreon is, you can visit the link here and check out Patreon there. Till next time, take care everyone. Always test your substances. And yeah, have a good one guys.